Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I just lost another video. <laughs> anyway, so I will try to make sure I do everything I'm supposed to do <laughs> to get this one to upload. I had uh, about 20 minutes into it and I had forgotten to plug my laptop back in and lost the whole thing. So that's okay. <clears throat> it's important that I share with you right now what I'm going to share with you because there seems to be some serious misunderstanding in our people, amen Jesus, who are encouraging others out here to continue to believe in something that was considered to be a heresy during the first century church. And that is that the resurrection has already taken place. So, I say that, and uh, as I make comment now to a few other things, first of all, uh, to my sister Nancy, of whom I really love uh, what I'm hearing being said from her in her comments uh, of late. I really believe that there's been a, a major breakthrough for her, uh, like she had shared. I, I, I do believe that. <coughs> um, and when I listen to her comments, they're, they're very pertinent to what is actually being shared on the videos. And there are in-depth relative to the truth according to the gospel given to us, passed on to us. And they show a lot of insight and understanding. I told her in one of my replies to her, which unfortunately is part of the problem I'm experiencing right now, perhaps from my channel, or it may be due to the fact that a few of you who are leaving comments are not really subscribed to the channel. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but I have subscribed to uh, Sister Nancy's videos or channel, and I don't know that she has actually subscribed to me. Because what's happening is, is I'll make a reply to her comments, and they're just not going through. I made a couple of them <clears throat> on this last video uh, to encourage her and to share with her uh, in what she was sharing. And uh, then I also tried to get a hold of, uh, through a comment, but this was after I'd made a couple of comments to Sister Nancy, and the comments were still in the box, had not downloaded or uploaded or whatever you want to call it. And then I went on to try to make a comment to Sister Medina, Melissa Medina, regarding what she was sharing with uh, Sister Nancy. And which is part of what uh, I had tried to reply back to Sister Nancy about. In what I am sharing about what is not being seen, it's not what we come in to understand through the spirit of truth in the removing of the log from our own eyes, which is what she's begun to start to sh share and understand in and of herself, which is a very great thing. Uh, the depths of which opens up the doors to the entire, as far as I'm concerned, gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And uh, because when we start to realize the work and the will of the Father that needs to take place in us and through us, as she has begun to share, it also helps us to start to see the other aspects of his work and will regarding what I believe is yet to have be unveiled uh, to the body. And that's what I'm sharing. Not, not what spiritually we come into in the new birth and through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the cleaning up of the inside of the cup. Not that. Yes, you do. That's the first portion, okay, of the seeing. Okay, and here, all right, but that there is a second portion that we're about to receive, which will open up our eyes to seeing the revelation of the body of Christ that has not been being 
seen prior to this in the fullness that it's about to begin to be seen and that Paul spoke of of which they saw looked into a dimly lit mirrored reflection and that is in relationship to the types and the shadows of those things okay, which would come to us that were given that were a part of that journey all right of the natural seed and that's why those examples are used to help us to begin to understand the revelation but the reason that it has not come is that I personally happen to believe that it's only given to them who are going to be gathered in under the anointing of the sons and daughters of God the other issue is, and I began to share with you, is the heresy of which so many of you may not understand that, that uh, Brother Phil, Seek Christ Only, and I had been sharing for, I, I don't know, almost as, as long as I've been out here. Along with Sifted Believer, uh, Sister Catherine, and a few others who I, I don't know if they still uh, uh, listen or they whatever, you know. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it began just between Phil and I, just like every other, amen, Jesus, uh, relationship regarding the Word of God and, and brothers. We, we receive one another, you know, uh, I do anyway, immediately, and all of us should, uh, as I've mentioned before, as if they were born in the land. In other words, have already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, have become citizens of the kingdom of heaven, being led by the Spirit of God. That's how we're to receive one another. Not in doubtful disputation, okay, concerning the faith. So I received them and him as if they were members of the body of Christ. So in the beginning, that was all fine and well, and we conversed back and forth, and we had a lot of, a few little laughs here and there along the way, and shared some things in common. But then, <clears throat> when I would begin to share with him, as I've been sharing with you and others, regarding the revelation, which is about to take place, in the coming together and the resurrection, the true resurrection, of which I then find out through a, a period of time. And prior to that, I want to explain to you what, what took place uh, a little bit. For those of you who maybe uh, understand, uh, want to understand, because I don't think Phil's the only one who has been, and I've seen others mention it, uh, preacherism, Okay, and or believing that the resurrection has already taken place, that it took place during the first century in 70 A.D. They don't see that the governments of this world have become the gut, are to become the governments of God. God rules in the world. They don't see that hasn't taken place yet. And they don't see that what the words of God says regarding the entire world uh, suffers in the tribulation. You see, they're, they're focused on what took place in Jerusalem and see that as that destruction, okay, and resurrection. So we were told back then that there were those who were going about saying the resurrection had already taken place, and it had not. And that's where we're left regarding that. Now, those who pick up with that same heresy after 70 A.D. claim 70 A.D. and the destruction of Jerusalem as being the period of time of which the resurrection took place. So I have my, I see Sister Kathleen encouraging uh, Brother Phil, and I was always under the impression that Kathleen felt as I did regarding the sons and daughters of God and that ministry which is about to come forth, and that the resurrection had not taken place yet. So, I don't know, I, she's causing me to be a little confused about where she stands on that, because for you to, for anyone 
to uh, encourage another who is contradicting the faith regarding a heresy, I don't know. So I suggest that you all personally ask Phil, seek Christ only, about his position regarding the resurrection before you start encouraging him. I was going to tell you at that same period of time while he and I were fellowshipping, I noticed that he was going off into other channels and picking up other different teachings other than what was written in the Word of God and the Gospel. Okay? And he would bring them back and or he would share them on his videos. And then that's when things started to fall apart for he and I because I was not in agreement with him. And I would share with him scripture to contradict what it was that he was sharing. And he himself <clears throat> said he didn't believe in everything that, <laughs> that he was sharing. And I'm thinking to myself, well, brother, why would you share any part of anything that you've heard from somebody else if you didn't believe in everything that was being said? So that kind of reasoning and logic, okay, doesn't seem to work with Phil. Uh, I believe there's a great delusion that has taken place for many, okay, and that unfortunately he's a part of that. But again, share with him. Really actually talk to him for those of you that are out here. And I wish you would do that with each other to really find out where each other are at in the gospel, in the body of Christ, or if you be in the body of Christ, in the faith. Because not everybody who claims the name of Jesus Christ is walking in the way, has been established upon the foundation with Jesus as the cornerstone. Anyway, I have been very, very encouraged. I, 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 the sisters, the sister Melissa Medina or Medina Melissa Melissa Medina, um, she was mentioning to uh, Sister Nancy uh, regarding what I had been sharing with you some times ago, and of which a sister came up with a video regarding how the relationship of the two sides of the brain and the spinal cord, and of course, then we have to admit, okay to the truth of what was written in the Word of God concerning the fivefold ministry and the picture that's given to us of a man's body. That's there's a symbolic similarity regarding the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, the fivefold ministries, the eyes, the ears, the nose, and the mouth, with Jesus Christ as the head and or the Holy Spirit of God leading the church as the comfort. These all connect. I've gone on to say that the four rivers, amen Jesus, they come out from that one hands and feet. And I've mentioned that the four rivers, hands, okay, relate to the gold or faith, okay, where there is much gold in the ministry all right, of the hands. Like when, uh, who was it? Peter and uh, Paul? Peter and James? Somebody. He went to the temple and the crippled band sitting down there and Peter says to him, uh, uh, okay, uh, gold and silver, I have uh, none, but such as I have. And he reaches out his right hand to the lame man and says, such as that, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Faith. Which is also why there's five foolish and five wise. <clears throat> it's relative to the household of faith. And then, the last two rivers, the feet. Okay. So anyway, uh, Sister Melissa Medina was sharing that. Similarities of the mind, the left side esoteric, the right side concrete, 
there are different psychological terms regarding that. One is the artistic aspect and or the spiritual part, okay, tree of life. And the other is the concrete, natural, cardinal mind, the tree of, no of the knowledge of good and evil. And most of us, very rarely, are uh, very few artists or spiritual people, okay, and that you know, she goes on to explain the membrane in the wall and the separating, and it all sounded, you know, pretty good to me. So, but my sister Nancy, as myself, and I'll tell you how, how that similarity is, relative to Sister Tab and our conversation, and there was another sister there at that time of who I was receiving emails from, so I'm not sure if it was Sister Tab, and I don't want to say it, so I will just say the email that I was receiving and the person I was talking to in these emails. I'm going to use that as a comparison to what is a likeness to what uh, Sister uh, Nancy was saying to Sister Medina, Melissa Medina. Uh, and that is that at this time, she, Sister Nancy had not come into that. Amen. And I also want to make mention to my sister Nancy, that when I'm referring to what is being seen, it's not relative in relationship to the working of the will of God in us and through us by the spirit of truth, okay, which unveils these lies and deceptions in us of the cardinal mind, okay, those, which is the first portion of the eyes and the ears, okay, have been received by them who are in the inner court, who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They then do have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. The seeing that I'm referring to comes to us in the double portion, which is yet to come. So there's two different kinds of seeing going on here. The one, I am in total agreement with my sister Nancy, yes, it's the spirit of truth We've been given to see, okay? But that's not the seeing I'm referring to. And I hope that helps her to understand a little, maybe. So, <clears throat> kind of like what Sister Melissa Medina was sharing with you, Sister Nancy, uh, of which you said, well, I haven't come into that yet. And so, you know, now... How is that like what the emails I was receiving? How is that like? I took the same position <laughs> as Sister Nancy did with the emails I was receiving, which I believe were from Tab, but I, I don't know. They were so deep, and to me, flags went up because of the darkness. There was a deep darkness. But in the wisdom of the wise, it's written of their deep, or dark sayings, okay? So I won't and have not discounted what she said. I simply explained to her, as Sister Nancy said to Melissa Medina, that I had not come into that. And unless I have come to an understanding of something that is connected to the foundation and to the cornerstone of our faith, I don't go into it. That's just the way it is. I, I believe there are depths of which we are not to go into. No, because the other is true. There is also the deep things of the devil. Okay? And because of that, if I don't have the light with me, revealing, unveiling these things for me, then it's as if you're entering into the darkness and to me you're taking a chance. Okay? And I don't go there. I, I just won't. And that's how it's like what Sister Nancy was saying to Sister Melissa McGinn. And a lot of things that Nancy is saying right now are really, uh, you know, when it's like I, I think about, actually, myself, it's just perhaps things are a little bit different now for me because I've been around a little longer and shared these things over and over and over again for about 25, 30 years. 
Okay, it's, it's not, that, that's why it's probably a little easier for me to share um, the intimacies of the understanding of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven as I've come to understand them, okay, uh, than, that, than others who may just now be beginning to try to share. Because it takes a period of time of, of learning and, and actually sharing it, okay, before it starts to flow, okay. It isn't that the truth isn't there. It isn't that they have not come into the understandings and that it's in them to share it. It's the practicing of sharing it that sometimes causes us to get, you know, bound up and we find it hard to share, to say things or explain them because we really haven't practiced it. Some of us have been practicing it for a longer period of time, practicing the sharing of the spiritual depths and the truths that have been shared with us and opened up to us. So, amen, Jesus. But, <laughs> I have noted that with my sister Nancy, it's like what they said about Paul, and I made mention to her about that, that in his letters, he was weighty, but that in person, he was really kind of meek, okay, and kind of uncertain of himself. But, uh, and so when I read some of the comments, my sister Nancy leaves. Wow, they're, they're pretty weighty, okay. So I kind of, I, I, I listen to the, I watch these things, I see these things, I listen to these things, and uh, I'm encouraged by them. Because to me, that likeness of Paul's ministry, I, I really think that when he mentioned that he was their father. He was referring to the revelation and having come to birth in that revelation. It's my belief that all of them who have come to birth in the revelation will have some strong similarities to Paul and his ministry. Because in the revelation, that was given to him to give to us by God. He was the one who began it. God began it, that revelation through Paul to us. That's why Paul was referring to himself as being their father. He was not referring to the gospel of the kingdom of heaven or of salvation. Okay? So, uh, I spoke about Brother Phil and his beliefs of the resurrection already taking place. That's why I have turned away from him. Because the Word tells us that we're supposed to. Now, whether or not you're being obedient or think <laughs> it's just okay to encourage those people and not turn away from them, that's between you and God. I say that to Sister Catherine because she seems to, uh, like I said in these comments, have encouraged Phil. I don't think she's aware of the fact of his position regarding the resurrection. I could be wrong, but I don't think she is. I, I would really hate to think that she would have fellowship with someone who is teaching a heresy of which we know is a heresy. Uh, when we're told to have no fellowship with them. So, um, that's about it. Other than, amen Jesus, a little late in the video, but I wanted to get into, there's so much relative to why we have been where we're at and the realization of our being citizens of the kingdom of heaven and then now coming into the revelation, which I, I assure you, all of them who come into the revelation, who, first of all, I, I believe you have to come into the realization, okay, that you're no longer, okay, even though you're, you see yourself here in this realm, you are no longer here, but you are citizens in the kingdom of heaven. All right? But that when you get to that point and you actually enter into the revelation, without question, there's, there's no more 
um, consideration for this realm whatsoever. That all your attention is focused on the building of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. If there's a reason why I don't enter into these households of faith now, it's because of the worthlessness of what they're doing. They're not actually living their lives in the kingdom of heaven as a community of believers. And we have it at this hour, okay, or prior to this period of time, as a trial and testing of our individual faiths. That we mature and grow, and as we do, we'll come to the conclusion, it's my belief, that from in and around the 60s, 1967, and or the Seven Day War, that from that point in time, the false fire began to come forth. Now, whether or not it was already coming forth in part here, there, now and then, well, that's, that's totally possible. But to me, relative to those periods of time of which the Word of God speaks of, I believe that in and around the 60s, you can see what took place not only upon the churches, and if you look back into that period of time, you'll see what took place in the mainland. Uh, Catholicism came forth with the charismatic movement. Of course, they stuck that in the basement. <laughs> Amen. And the same with the Baptists and all of the other mainline Christian faiths in and around the 1960s, which was also the period of time of the Seven Day War, of which they recaptured Jerusalem. Okay? <laughs> that at that time, amen, Jesus, many were saying, Christ is here, Christ is there. There was an explosion of storefront Pentecostal churches established during that period of time. But at the same time, in the world, which could be seen more readily here in this country, we had the hippie movement, the love movement. And I shared with you some time ago how up until, from about the 1900s right on through until the 1960s, we had been receiving the hell, fire, and damnation gospel, of which the Baptists are pretty famous for, Okay, but after that period of time, because I believe, it's my belief, that Joel's prophecy, just as they mentioned that the ministry that was given to them regarding the revelation and that dimly lit mirrored reflection was only given to them in part. That the fullness had not come, of which is about to take place. That along with that, on the day of Pentecost, because if you'll read the word closely enough with a fine-tooth comb, you will see <coughs> that Joel's prophecy was that the Holy Spirit would come upon all flesh. Not just upon the believers. And we see that that's exactly what took place. <clears throat> in Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit did not come upon all flesh at that hour. So it's my belief that that was the in part fulfilling of Joel's prophecy. That the fullness of that fulfilling of that prophecy did not take place until in and around 1960s and the Seven Day War. Because if you will notice that not only did it something take place in and through all of mainline Christianity regarding the Holy Spirit and its movement, but it was taking place all over the world for man, all flesh. The hippie movement, the love movement, okay, this whole thing about the political upheaval and what people were seeing regarding the government, Okay? All of that began to change in and around that time.
like a revolution began to take place. Because man, having the Holy Spirit come upon his flesh, and not to mention, amen, Jesus, the fact that it was at exactly that same period of time of which what? There was an explosion of knowledge. <laughs> Going to the moon, computers, okay? Look into it and see if that's not what took place. Man would like to say, well, that was him, but I don't believe so. I believe that when the Holy Spirit had come upon all flesh, that it, it, its reaction to that went in two different directions. One, okay, in the increase of knowledge, of which man, seeing himself as his own God, assumed that he was just all this in a bag of chips when it was really God moving things forward in an expedited form, way to bring us to where we're at today. So that these things all began to start to take place and set themselves up. But that the other part of that was in among the households of faith when there was a renewal okay of the leading of the Holy Spirit in and among the church. And even that had its own divisions. Because from that point on, brothers and sisters, we go check it out. <laughs> there was a marked increase in the division of the denomination throughout the world. So, where man takes that spirit in the flesh, is into sex, immorality, lust, wanting more, drugs, alcohol, partying. Okay. I was a part of that party spirit during that period of time. Because I didn't ask the Lord in my heart and life until, I believe it was 1976, 77. So I was part of that old hippie movement and smoking pot and all that stuff too. So I know what the spirit of the world and that party spirit is all about. But I also understand and know that there was a period of time during that of which the peace and love, as a matter of fact, relative to the hellfire and damnation gospel that had been preached up until that time, the hippie movement of peace and love seemed more in line with, because at the same time there was a lot of what they called Jesus freaks out here. <coughs> kind of a mixture between a hippie and a believer, <coughs> all right, with the peace and love message. Okay? Those of you who haven't been around as long as some of us have been, have not been here to see these things take place. And so I'm sharing them with you so that maybe you'll take an interest to go back and see how that can be relative to what I'm saying about Joel's prophecy, being fulfilled, of which the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, was spread out upon all flesh. Not just the believers, but all flesh at that hour. So I don't want to go on much longer, and uh, I'll make another video, because of what, I, what I wanted to do was to bring you into where the scattering of the sheep back during the first century, which is what took place at the time of Jerusalem's destruction, or the temple, uh, the destruction of the temple in 70 A.D., that was the scattering of the flock, of which he said, "Amen, Jesus." Uh, they had been left as sheep for the slaughter, and we'll get into that a little bit longer, or a little bit more in another video, uh, maybe today or tomorrow. The Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen.